we're here today with Pastor Joel Osteen, whose new book is called Become a Better You, Seven Keys to Improving Your Life Every Day. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to Borders today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Appreciate what you guys are doing for us and just uh, enjoying the time. You know, uh, your first book, Your Best Life Now, was a, a phenomenal bestseller. There's more than four million copies in print out there. And obviously with that many books out in the world, there's a lot of people who are attempting to live their best life now or living their best life now. So with that in mind, how did you decide to come out with another book and, and how does this book complement your first book? Well, it, it basically, um, I wanted to, I felt like people needed to keep growing. We all should keep growing and that's what the book is about. I mean, uh, living your best life now was a lot about enlarging your vision and things like, things like that. This book is more about what can we do every day to become better because uh, I, I see a lot of people that get stuck where they are in life and it, maybe it's a good place, but I don't believe we should ever get satisfied in, in one sense. We should be content, but we should always be wanting to grow, become better parents and better employees and just in every area of our life. So that's kind of what was birthed out of me was to, uh, how, can we, how can I help people improve every day? It was kind of funny because once you live your best life, what else can you do? But in the book, we talk about, you know, how do you do that? You do it through better habits and through better relationships and through better thinking. And so it's real practical stuff. Yeah, each key really sort of goes into some detail within the book that, that provides guidance at sort of every level of this sort of journey through the book. But I think one of the things that makes this book, you know, um, as practical as it is, is your storytelling and, and your, your uh, ability to sort of connect on a very real, human, everyday level with the people that you're talking to. Some of your stories, in fact, um, indicate in real time how you're, you're still trying to live your best life. I mean, some yeah. of your stories are self-deprecating or they or they're not exactly, uh, you know, you're, they're you learning as sure, you go along. Sure. I think that's part of what God's blessed us with is that I don't know it all. I've said it out there today, but, you know, it's just practical stuff. And I, I think that most of the time when I speak, I think, well, how does this affect me? And, you know, how am I growing in this area? And so I think people can relate to that, that it's not some big fancy doctrine or something. These are stuff that you can, these are things that we can do just just every day and I do like to keep it simple. Sometimes, you know, people may be giving me a hard time about it, about it simple and well, I already knew that. Well, it's just stuff that, it, a lot of it is just things that we're being reminded of mm -hmm. and it's simple and you put it into action, it can help you become better. It is, I mean, there's a, there's a story in here about you uh, leaving a, a Houston Astros game and you're absolutely certain you're going the right way and your wife Victoria was absolutely certain you were going the wrong way and that argument ensued and your frustrations and angers and there's not one married couple in America who's not gonna perfectly understand that moment. Yeah. And you took that and turned it into this uh, sort of guidepost on how to sort of remember that you're never quite done. You're never quite done learning and getting better and improving yourself. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I, I think you're right. I like to use things like that because it was it was a, a lesson for me to say, you know what, I could have swallowed my pride and said, let's go your way first. But, you know, it's just that human nature. It says, you know, I don't want to do it my way. And yeah. and I just made it into a funny thing, but I ended up coming back and doing it her way. But I think that's where we live on these everyday, you know, I like to talk on where the rubber meets the road, I call it, where we live and how can we get along better with the people in our families and how can I think better and how can I get each get up each day and go to work with a good attitude when I got a lot of negative things happening so that's kind of the, the way I like to help people. You also talk though about um, about finding your destiny and making sure that you're living a fulfilled life yeah. and that's obviously a path that so many people think about every day and in that regard this book which while well, has absolutely Christian fun, you know, foundation to this book mm -hmm. The themes, though, of, of self-improvement and getting better are, are completely universal. I mean, it seems to me that there will be a connection in this book to people, regardless of their religious faith or beliefs, that in here there lies a lot of um, guidance for better living. I believe that. And I, I believe that, you know, what I feel like I'm good at is taking the principles in the Bible and putting them to uh, teaching us how to live them in our everyday life. Uh, but the principles, I believe in God's Word, help anybody. I mean, we have people sitting in the audience today that are of different faiths and that doesn't bother me because our goal is to just help anybody from every any faith to improve their life and so I think you're exactly right in that it's a 
You know, there are universal truths. To me, if you give, you're going to be, God's going to bless you. It's going to be given back to you. It doesn't say if you're a Christian and you give. So that's my whole thing is just to present this to people. I like it to be broad as possible because I feel like uh, we're not supposed to just reach our one group. And, you know, we've, you know, I grew up in a church, uh, in, as my father being a minister, and it's easy to, you know, what we say, preach to the choir. But I like to get beyond that and say, let's open this up, and it helps other people think as well. And uh, so I'm pleased that you saw that as well. There are seven major sort of chapters within the book, but one of them does deal with finding your destiny and making sure that you're living, you're on the path at least, to living a fulfilled life. And that to me, again, is something that so many people struggle with. And I think your, your, your book does address it, and your, your book presses people to keep pressing forward and keep finding that path. Um, but that's something that's hard for people to know oftentimes, and they're, they're racked with doubt oftentimes. What kind of advice do you have about people who aren't sure, maybe, what their destiny might be. It's not always as clear-cut as it is for some people. I believe God puts the dreams and desires in you. Uh, my, for instance, when I was 15 or 16, I loved television production. I mean, my friend had a, uh, his parents owned a production company, and I just, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I'd spend my weekends uh, going up there and editing and playing with the equipment. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that's what I, I was gonna, what I wanted to do with my life. It was just natural to me. And I believe that's the way God makes us. It's, uh, if you're doing something that's not natural, that you don't enjoy, I don't think that's a part of your, I mean, it may be temporarily, but I don't believe that's a part of your uh, ultimate destiny. So in that book, I talk about, or in the book, I talk about how, you know, an owl is made to live at night. He's nocturnal. You can't take an owl and put him in the daytime and say, okay, go live your best life. Go become a better you. It's not going to work. So I think it gets back to that core of what, are you uh, on the inside? What's your passion? And then you have to try to, you know, believe that God will open up the right doors that you can get into something that you feel good about. If you're good with people, you shouldn't be sitting, you know, being an accountant all day. I mean, you may need to be in sales or some other field. And so that's what I try to encourage people at, to, to look deep in the inside.